judging, nomination, of all the breeds of activities on this the penultimate day of the world's greatest dog show. The first of our group this evening, the working group. Our judge for tonight's working group is Mr. Kari Yarbanen, who has travelled to be with us this evening from Finland. Before we welcome Kari into the ring, let me tell you a little bit about him. So you join us now for the working group in the big ring. We're going to see our judge introduced. Kari Yavinen from Finland is going to be judging the working dogs this evening. He's judged in 80 countries around the world and has enjoyed it enormously. In fact, Kari has previously judged the pastoral group here in France. He says, as well as the dogs, he enjoys visiting these shows and enjoys introducing ideas back to shows at home in Finland. He's been chairman of the Finnish Kennel Club's Helsinki Show Committee for 30 years. A truly experienced dog man, Harry is very much looking forward to tonight's group. And another little snippet of information that ensues, he was a first division goalkeeper for Helsinki at ice hockey, their national sport. We now welcome into the main ring, Mr. Kari Arvinen from Finland, being escorted tonight by Anne McDonald, Vice Chair of Cross Committee. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to show your So here comes Carrie Yarvinen with Anne McDonald. An honour to take centre stage for the working group at Crufts 2016. And he has a suit to match that honour. He certainly does. 23 best of breed winners we're going to see. But uh, first of all, we'll be seeing the any variety import from the working group this is not in the competition but it'll get its parade having won it gets its chance to come into the ring and be seen this is a variety that is not in our competition as yet and it's a great swiss mountain dog called spring haze just dreaming he's known as jules or she is because it's a two-year-old bitch so they get their moment in the ring and one lap to show off. There we go. And in honour of the fact that these breeds are just starting to get established, the imported register. Not quite enough numbers to be part of the breed register yet, but very much here in the UK. Now, the first of our best of breed winners in the working group, it's the spectacular Alaskan Malamute. And the Bernese Mountain Dog. The Bouvier des Flandres. He's now welcome the boxer. Followed by the boxer. Always popular in the working group. The massive bull mastiff. And the Canadian Eskimo dog. Next, instantly recognizable, the Doberman. And for all movie buffs, they'll recognize the Dog de Bordeaux. And now the German Pinscher. The German Pinscher. He's welcome, the giant Schnauzer. And the giant Schnauzer. The Great Dane. And he's welcome, the Greenland Dog. And the Greenland Dog. Followed by the Hoverbart. The Hoverbart. And the giant, the Leonberger. A slower progression, perhaps, for the Mastiff. And I suspect even slower with the Neapolitan Mastiff. The Newfoundland. Always popular. And the Portuguese Water Dog. Next, the Rottweiler. Followed by the impressive Russian Black Terrier. And now the St. Bernard. A true giant, the St. Bernard. Siberian Husky. And there's the Siberian Husky. And the final of our best of breed winners, the Tibetan Mastiff. Lovely view there of all our working group best of breed winners lined around the ring. And Kari Yavanen now 
He's seen them all move in, but he'll now go and he'll take a walk along the line just to familiar himself, familiarize himself with the collection of 23 wonderful animals he's got in front of him. I love the working group. I, these big dogs are just stunning. I don't keep one now. They can be terribly, they can occupy an awful lot of space and they can, some of them, be quite high maintenance, but my word, they are magnificent. Taking a look there at the Bouvier de Flandre, one of the breeds that uh, our co-commentator Frank Kane judged today and the ever-popular boxer. And the bull mastiff. There are some massive animals in this. <laughs> Classic British breed, the bull mastiff. And there's, we've got the Canadian Eskimo dog. There are several dogs in the group, of course, which uh, look rather similar. The sledge dogs, mostly. Largest of the schnauzer varieties, the giant schnauzer there in black. Elegance of the Great Dane. Just taking a look at the outline at the moment and, and getting a first size up of our best of breed winners. What have all the breed judges sent through to the group this evening? Each of these, of course, representing their breed. It's a great achievement to come to Crofts and win your best of breed. Some of the uh, breeds here have had upwards of 200 dogs or bitches being judged in the ring with them, and they've come through as their best in that breed. It's a remarkable achievement, and anyone who gets into the group has done exceptionally well as a breeder, handler, groomer. So this is the first dog, the Alaskan Malamute. This is Bart, five-year-old dog, handled uh, by Sue Ellis, uh, by Sue Smith, I think, in the in the ring. This is. They come from the rugged western area of Alaska. They've got to be pretty hardy to stay alive there. And of course, Bart took the group here last year at Crufts, so knocking on the door again this year, a superb example of his breed, a really massive dog, the Alaskan Malamute, a sled dog and a freight hauler. And they can cope with prodigious loads, they really can. If you've seen the sledge dog competitions, I've seen up in Aviemore, and you watch them pull just enormous loads, they're just so strong. And of course, that characteristic spitz type and a coat that can cope with all weathers. The Alaskan Malamute. The Bernese Mountain Dog. This one come all the way from Belgium to compete at Crufts. One of the four Swiss herding breeds and the only one with a longer coat. An all-purpose cattle herd and guard, a cart hauler, and most of all, a real people dog with a wonderful temperament. And the colouring is just remarkable on the Bernese. I think they are very, very beautiful dogs. The breed can be traced back to the Roman invasion of what we now call Switzerland about 2,000 years ago. Characteristically tricolour, of course, strong head, flat topped, high set triangle ears, soft, silky coat to the touch, brilliant and weatherproof. The Bernese Mountain Dog. Well, this is the Bouvier de Flandre. He's called Hector, this boy. He's two years old. <coughs> Breed judge, as uh, Jessica said earlier, was Frank Kane today. And the handler in the ring is Michael Craig. This dog was best in show in Blackpool last year and best in show in Richmond also last year. So has won a lot. Another interesting point is that it's said in the 
Originally developed in Belgium and in France, his name translates as the Flanders Oxherd. And if you were to go back 100 years, that coat would have been flatter and perhaps a little harsher. But today it should be abundant, although still dry and coarse to the touch. It's a very rugged, powerful dog. Used, as we've said, herding and protecting cattle in Belgium and France. This is Ella, a boxer, of course, three years old. Basically, the boxer is energy personified, enthusiastic, full of stamina, spirit and strong will. A wonderful companion dog as well as a great worker. The description of the boxer's magnificent head actually takes up a sizable chunk of the standard. Lean, slightly arched skull, powerful muzzle with an upward curve to the lower jaw. And the name boxer, really, it's a refined version of the German word Bullenbeiter, meaning bull biter. Uh, a guarding breed of high order, they're very intelligent. Delightful breed, and that wonderful coat, look how sleek it looks there. This should be solid, but there's an elegance about the boxer too, almost square in outline, well-boned and powerful, you can see there, both front and rear. But those feet are almost cat-like. Noble on the move, the boxer. And we're looking now at the bull mastiff. Quite young, this one, 22 months old. He's called Keanu. And uh, the owner, Mrs. Francesca Pavese, the dog comes from Italy. And I guess she's handling there in the ring, but I'm not certain. A British breed. Evolved from the old English Mastiff and the Bulldog, primarily used as a guard dog. If you run a tape around the Bull Mastiff's head, it'll be just about the same as the height of the dog at the Withers. You need some massive quality there. Wide and deep bodied, straight, powerful forelegs, driving forwards on the move from behind. That coat is short and quite hard, and they always have that wonderful black mask. Yeah, you see the strength, well-muscled dog. Look at those beautiful muscles in the shoulders. This is a Canadian Eskimo dog, the history of which can be traced all the way back through their Inuit tribal masters for over 800 years. But with the course, with the mechanization of the North, skidoos and the like, these sled dogs dwindled almost to the point of extinction. They're still rare, but their aficionados have taken care of them. This is a rather lovely example of the breed. Yes, this is a dog. His name is Napu. We're looking for a typical spitz here, a broad wedge of a head, small, wide-set ears, Eyes can be any colour except blue, and sometimes you get odd ones. Very much a working breed rather than a domestic pet, and certainly a dog that would end up as being the top dog in any group. And this is a male, this one, a dog, and you'd expect him to have a slightly bigger mane than you would with a female. Well, we're looking here at Ciccio, who is four and a half year old bitch, as we said. It's wrong, actually. Wrong information I'm giving. I apologize for that. Here's my Doberman. This is Billy, who is a two year old dog. And I do apologize. I just got uh, the wrong card up before I looked at the screen. And this uh, is owned by Mrs. Jackie and, Mrs. and Miss Victoria Ingram from Essex. The handler there in the ring is Josh Henderson. Lovely story behind the development of the Doberman, originally from the German Shepherd Dog and the German Pincher, developed by a chap called uh, Louis Doberman. He was a tax collector. And of course, like all tax collectors, he desperately needed a minder. And he decided to opt for a canine minder and developed the Doberman as a result. Versatile, 
Used in many working disciplines, elegant and proud, intelligent and tough, this breed. And I'll bet it would encourage the person to pay their tax. Another dog of mastiff type, this is the dog de Bordeaux. Instantly recognisable for that spectacular head. Fine short coat in all shades of fawn from mahogany to the palest of Isabella. It's a big head with a very characteristic shape and expression and the nose pigment always ties in with the colour of the coat. And this is Ciccio, the four and a half year old uh, bitch, come from Italy to be here today. Surprisingly agile, these dogs, able to jump considerable heights. And is that more athletic in the shape of a wrestler rather than a runner, one would think. Originally used for hunting and fighting, so as a hunter, the dog needed to be able to move. We're looking for breadth and depth, power and solidity, but not without that essential agility and soundness. The dog de Bordeaux. And this is the German Pincher. It's called Affy, 19 month old bitch, owned by Debbie Gamble. She comes from France, and Cindy Ranson is the breeder and is handling there in the ring. The German Pincher, smooth coated dog from of German origin. He's a middle sized member of the group, fits in rather between a the Doberman and a miniature Pinscher. Typical Pinscher, we're looking for a, a blunt wedge of a head, little V-shaped ears, in this case folded, close to the head, elegant, strong neck, gives them a very proud carriage for a medium-sized dog in this group compact and the the top of the dog the top line as we call it which is the back line from the shoulders to the tail should slope very slightly downwards this beautiful black giant schnauzer the largest of the schnauzer varieties has come all the way from Poland to compete, judged again by our co-commentator Frank Kane today. Can come in a pepper and salt colour, but the black is much more common with the giant. Bold, tempered and powerful, but we are looking for refinement, no heaviness in the giant schnauzer. And of course came here, as I think just said, from Poland to take part uh, here today. Farmers around the Munich area would use these dogs originally as droving dogs from way back in the 15th century, right up until the arrival of the railways when uh, they weren't required to do that anymore. Large cattle drives just vanished. Widely used for police and security work in Europe and very amenable to training. And that harsh, wiry top coat over a weatherproof undercoat stripped to perfection for the show ring. And this unmistakably is the Great Dane. This one is called Shandon. It's a bitch. It's two years old. It comes from Ireland. And the handler in the ring is uh, Karen Rice Rafferty, who is the breeder and owner as well. There we are. And this is the Great Dane. They come in a variety of striking colours. This one uh, is not in any one of those <laughs> extraordinary colours like Harlequin, but uh, it's a lovely, nice, uh, rich, I think, is this called sand or fawn? Lovely colour. And the Great Dane, despite that size, needs to be an elegant, easy free mover because it was a highly prized boar hunter. Long head, powerful jaws, as you'd expect with a hunting dog, carried on that proud, long, arched neck. Massive bone, but with plenty of agility there. Strong hindquarters driving that movement. Been the national dog of Germany for many years. This is a Greenland dog. 
Definitely not a dog for the faint-hearted, this one. You'll never wear him out. He needs a very firm pack leader because his heritage as an all-purpose haulage dog in his native Greenland means he's tough, independent, strong-willed. Takes a good bit of looking after. Typical Spitz. This is a five-year-old dog called Oscar. They're similar in general construction to the Alaskan Malamute and the Siberian Husky and comes midway between the breeds, really, in, uh, in both height and in weight. Never really been a domesticated animal, the Greenland dog, and not suited, as Jess was saying, to the novice owner due to its very primitive spitz nature. And this one's a dog, so we should expect it to be heavier, taller, and possibly a bit heavier coated than a female. This lovely head belongs to a hoverbart. This is Guinness, who's a three-year-old dog. Michael Murphy owns him. He comes from Kildare in uh, Ireland. And I can't pronounce the name of the handler here. It's a Yul Yulia uh, Dimitrevia, I think but I apologise if I'm wrong. It's a breed of considerable antiqu antiquity, been known for many centuries as a guard dog, mainly in the farmyard. And the name Hovervart actually means guardian of the property. And dogs of this type date way, way back to the 1200s in their native Germany. Powerful, medium-sized, practical sort of dog. It's <laughs> good, good term. We're looking for a rectangular outline. That long, weather-resistant coat is either in blonde or, in this case, black and gold. The markings, very typical and particular. There's no mistaking the Leonberger. Created originally by Heinrich Essig, who was, in the 1940s, very, very fond of large dogs, he must have been, Cre uh, crossed um, St. Bernard's with Newfoundlands to create a, a massive dog, but he wanted a wonderful, biddable temperament, and that's what he got with the Leonberger. It was a guard who almost died out at the beginning of the 20th century, but thank goodness a wonderful resurgence now. It is actually quite remarkable. There are only five Leonbergers left alive at the end of the First World War which is startling, but the breed has recovered and now is very well known here in the UK, a very popular breed to see. Very good guarding breed. Generally, they have a wonderful, equable temper. There's lovely feathered pendant ears and a black mask, medium textured coat. And I should be rooting for this one. It's called Jessica. You should indeed. 16 months old she is. Now this is the Mastiff. Jorgen is the name of the dog, 21 months old. Uh, the owners are Charlotte Radondi, and they come from France, from Castelnau de Montmiral. I don't think I've ever been there, but it sounds absolutely delightful. The Mastiff has been in existence for many hundreds of years, played its part in history since well before the Battle of Agincourt in the early 15th century. The breed almost became in Brit uh, extinct in Britain after the Second World War. That's quite right. They could be traced all the way back to the Anglo-Saxon times, and the word masty in Anglo-Saxon meant powerful, and that's exactly what we see here, a powerful, massive weight of a dog. Have a, having said that, always sound and free move it moving with a powerful, easy stride you can see there. Square head from just about every angle. Small, dark, wide set eyes and ears deep in the muzzle. Slightly pendulous lips you can see there flowing beautifully on the move. <laughs> Another of the Mastiff breeds, easy to see. This one developed in Italy, the Neapolitan Mastiff. It was developed from the, originally from the Roman Molossus, 
And that was a dog that you could regularly see fighting for its own survival in the gladiatorial arena. And that's part of the reason why this dog has the loose skin around the head and body. Because if you're going to get bitten by a bear or a lion, rather it takes skin than anything more important. Now these dogs have really seen service over the years as a war dog, police dog, guard and a draft dog. And uh, they were never shown in shows in uh, Italy until uh, 1946 was the first time. Characteristic colour, and if you're wondering why the handler is wearing a sort of shiny skirt, it's because dribble is a speciality <laughs> of the ne Neapolitan Mastiff. One or two of these big breeds are like that. <laughs> And I have the biggest soft spot for these, the Newfoundlands. This is Danny. It's a three and a half year old dog. Oh, and comes from Belgium, actually. The handler, Patrick Bogart, uh, who comes uh, from uh, Hasselt in Belgium. This dog's had 15 best of breeds in 10 months. Just three and a half years old. I think they're absolutely magnificent breeds. Developed from the early Tibetan Mastiff types of the company tribes across the polar regions. That's right, developed around the island of Newfoundland, from which the dog obviously takes its name. It's almost bear-like, broad in the head, short square muzzle. That wonderful coat is water-resistant, thick double, so it's got a lovely soft undercoat and a flat, dense coat on the top that repels the water. And takes a massive grooming. Well, I absolutely love them. That lovely rolling gait that they have, which is quite distinctive, the Newfoundland. Speaking of drool, <laughs> this one's doing quite well. Whoops. This is the Portuguese water dog. This one's come all the way from Finland to compete. There's actually a picture of a Portuguese water dog which is mislabeled as a water spaniel in Topsell's famous ancient tome, A History of Four-Footed Beasties, published in 1607. And they were originally used on fishing boats, both to go and fetch tackle that had been lost overboard, to take messages between boats, and to rescue the odd fisherman that might have had a bit too much rum. This one came to Crafts from Finland. It's called Gizmo, believe it or not. Three and a half year old dog. Owned by uh, Mrs. Christiansen and Mr. J. Ralamayana. Most important wins to date, today. And in case you're wondering, that coat, the dog is actually clipped at the rear end and on the muzzle, and the rest of the dog is covered in long, loosely waved coat. Nice and waterproof. One hundred and ninety three other Rottweilers were here today, but this one was judged best of them all. The three years, ten months old Leo, he's a dog, comes from Essex, handled in the ring by Jane Perks. And uh, the owners are John Osborne and Natalie Osborne. Massive dogs again, uh, stem from animals taken to Germany by Roman soldiers as they marched across Europe and they used to guard the livestock. And, of course, the Roman Empire might have had plenty of fantastic engineers to build roads, but it didn't have fridges, so they used to move the meat on the hoof, and that's what the Rottweiler was for. It was a wonderful drover's dog that could both guard the meat and look after the herd, move it along those Roman roads by nipping at heels and making sure the cattle moved in front of them. The spectacular Russian Black Terrier was developed as a military dog, incorporating both the giant Schnauzer, which is easy to see, the Airedale and the Rottweiler, to produce a massive dog, 70 centimetres tall, 70 kilos to lift into the back of the car. They were actually confined to state-owned breeding facilities in their native Russia until the 1950s.
Yes, this is a three-year-old dog. He's called uh, Tollick, and he comes from Bedford in the here in the UK. When the breed was uh, recognised in the UK, it was difficult to give him a name, and uh, they've ended up with calling him a terrier, which is really quite strange considering his size. There's no way this dog is going to go to ground. Uh, the Russian black precedes the name, and uh, they get away with that. He's a really here. impressive, imposing working dog, isn't it? Covered with that harsh, thick coat, profuse beard and moustache. Well, this is the St. Bernard. You can't mistake them. Absolutely enormous creature. This particular one is called Gottfried, and uh, it's a bitch. No, I beg your pardon, it's a dog, two years old, and it comes from Warwickshire in, in England. Lorna Yorks and Edward Grubb are the owners. A modern St. Bernard really ranks amongst the most massive of all dogs. Seems to even to have grown heavier, I guess, over the years. Known throughout the world as the mountain rescue dog of Switzerland. He was originally developed in the Great St. Bernard Pass in Switzerland, which is where he gets his name from. And in their early days, they were quite short coated. Today, you can also get them with a more profuse coat, but this one has a short coat, the one we've got in the ring this evening. Massive head, twice as long around as it is long carried on a long muscular neck and although this is a big dog we still need to see nice free sound movement what a contrast the spitz face of the siberian husky this is the raciest of the sled dogs medium-sized quick light on its feet and should be a balance of power speed and endurance that's what he needed to do his job as a people transporter across the siberian wastelands This is a bitch, six-year-old Chana. Uh, the eyes are absolutely beautiful blue in this case, but they can be party-eyed and they can be all shades of brown, so it's not specific what they must be, but they are great pack dogs. <laughs> and if you let one go in the countryside, you're going to be a long time waiting for him to come back. Head and tail like a fox, deep-chested, straight and strong all through, and a powerful, effortless mover, the best examples. Double coat, nice and weatherproof. And the final dog in the group, this is the Tibetan Mastiff. This is, uh, well, the pet name, believe it or not, is L. It's a strange name, isn't it? 25 months old, this dog, owned by Richard Gardner, and they come from uh, South Wales. Strong, well-built dog, comes from the foothills of the Himalayas and the borders of Tibet. Primarily, primarily a guard dog used to protect the flocks from preying wildlife and the home from intruders. And in truth, it was probably the Tibetan Mastiff that provided the rootstock, even for the Roman Molossa. So this dog is the precursor of all the other Mastiff types that you see in the ring tonight. Broad in the head, square muzzle, with perhaps a little wrinkle on the face. And a lovely bushy tail, usually in black or black and tan, the Tibetan Mastiff. So here's Carrie Yarvin and taking another look at those best of breed winners. Who is he going to choose to be the working group winner? So he's starting to call out his shortlist and he's brought out the Alaskan Malamute first of all. The Bouvier. The giant schnauzer. The Bull Mastiff's there as well. And the Mastiff. And the Newfoundland. Portuguese and port Water Dog. And the Tibetan and the Mastiff. Tibet. So that's the shortlist of eight. Uh, 
so of course, there's now quite a pattern of regularity in what happens at this point. There's a selection of eight there, and Kari will now go along, and he'll get each of them to move separately again. He may move them all together. It's entirely uh, within his control, whatever he wants to do. He is, he's going to, oh, he's just moving them up, or is he moving them around? No, he's sending them for one at a time. He's sending them around the ring. So there's the Alaska Malamut champion Cheo, my prerogative, group winner last year and in the shortlist this year as well. And the Bouvier here. Champion Lisport, Lord of the Rings. And the Bull Massive here, Angels Phoenix, the Devil's Advocate, Keanu, this 22-month-old dog. And here's Faze, the giant schnauzer from Poland. So Frank's got both of his best of breed winners into the cut. Followed by the Mastiff. Look at the size of that magnificent dog. <laughs> Jorgen. They've come from France to compete. And the Newfoundland. Very popular with the crowd, as always. Cypress Bays, the one that I want for, to bear in mind. Danny, he's called. Thank goodness he's got a short name. Gizmo, the Portuguese water dog, come from Finland and putting in a lovely performance this evening. And the last of them, the Tibetan Mastiff. That's a super Tibetan, actually. The markings on the face are remarkable, aren't they? Quite beautiful. So he's going to take another look at them now. Where is he going to go? These shortlisted dog. What a moment for them. The boards are coming out. He's made his decision very quickly. Where are we going? It's very nice to see the judging done briskly and efficiently. And no dithering straight in there. And the winner of the working group, Cross 2016, goes to He's going to the Bouvier. He has. Frank the Bouvier Kane will be absolutely delighted. Champion Lisport, Lord of the Rings, Hector, takes the group. The Bouvier de Flan. What a moment of glory there. Michael Craig handling. Group two, the Bull Mastiff. Don't think anyone's going to grumble at that. Angels Phoenix, the devil's advocate, just 22 months old and taking group two at Crufts. And the Newfie's in the frame, I'm glad to say. Newfie gets group three, that's Danny. I love him, look at it. Oh, you great big bear, beautiful. And last year's and group finally, winner has to be content with Group 4 this year, but a spectacular achievement to be placed two years running. Champion Cheo, my prerogative, Bart for Sue Ellis. But there's our winner, the Bouvier de Flandre takes the working group for 2016. Hector, sent through by Frank Kane, owned by Fiona Lambert and handled by Michael Craig in the ring. Champion Lisport, Lord of the Rings. Yes, that's an excellent result there. And as you say, Frank will be absolutely delighted. He's been working ever so hard today and he's not finished yet because he's going to be judging the next group, the pastoral group. <laughs> you have far to go home? I don't think you do. Ten minutes. 
Do you think you'll get much time to relax between now and tomorrow evening? Probably not. <laughs> How long did it take to get him ready today? Oh, luckily, the owner gets him ready. I'm just the, the glorified handler. <laughs> Bit of time to relax before tomorrow night? Definitely, yeah. Excellent. Have fun. Congratulations. I think you're going on your lap of honour now. So there's the winner, Hector, two years old. Proud winner. And the crowd are happy as well. Strong applause for him. Wonderful moment for Michael Crane, who's handling, but the owner, Fiona Lambert in Windsor, will be absolutely delighted. My word. So we have our fourth group winner, the working group winner, for the final on Sunday of Cross 2016. And what a treat for tonight. We're about to get the fifth group, the pastoral group.